Welcome back. I've got both the cars together here, both Beelzebub and Lucifer. I've been wanting to sort of do a side-by-side -side comparison, so, you know, since um, you know, I've, I've had the I've had the red one for about a week, and I've had this one a year, and um, I have been wanting to do you know comparison. And what's really striking when you put the two together, you know, I always look at you know the Series Three as being a very sort of low and sleek car, but in comparison. To, 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 to the latest generation X300, this really is dramatically lower. It's several inches lower, um, particularly, you know, over the front here. And, and the roof lines as well, it's just, yeah, that looks much more, it's much taller. Yeah, that's much lower. I honestly didn't realize quite how low and sleek the later cars were. Now, there's a reason why they were able to get the bonnet so low, and I'll, I'll do another video um, in a few minutes' time. I just wanted to sort of do a, um, you know, just a side-by-side, -side really. I'll, I'll do another, another video and explain why Jaguar were able to sort of get, you know, this car so low. And um, it's, all, it's all about the engine, and I will, um, I'll do a totally separate video. But they are both beautiful cars, and obviously... You know, this is the um, this is the original style. This this harks back to 1968, actually, when this first came out. And in fact, the the quad headlamp came out um, and the Mark 10 in 1961. This is basically the XJ is a pared down Mark 10. It's much it's not your it's much it's a much smaller car than the Mark 10, but it's it's very very similar. The Mark 10 had the similar sort of lines, um, four four headlights, and you know the sort of the the shape across the uh, the bonnet and the grill and um, that's you know, the mark 10 um, started this in 1961 so ultimately this is this sort of shape harks back to the 1960s and um, the, the the suspension re, you know is almost identical to what was in the mark 10 and the e-type in 1961 in this particular car not so in the red one now if we look at the red car you know it, it really does it's to the uninitiated, it's the same car. You know, if you weren't really familiar with Jaguars, you would swear that it was the same car. But the, the two, two, they're completely different generations. You know, this one, um, it was it was a deliberate act. You know, Jaguar made this car, you know, to look very much like this one. The, they, they had this wonderful car, the XJ40. That was the one with the square headlights. It had almost a completely flat bonnet. Mechanically, it was absolutely stunning. It really was truly amazing. It was a it was a truly wonderful car, but it was not really received very well um, when it was launched. And um, you know, it it, it, it just um, it didn't have the classical sort of curves and the quad headlight that Jaguar had become known for. So um, yeah, it was it did sell well, but it, you know it also it got criticised quite a lot. Um, you know, styling wise, it just didn't it didn't go um, as, as well publicly. You know, as, as, as Jaguar had hoped. It was just it was a difficult sell. It was a little bit like when the XJS took over from the uh, from the E-Type. It was so radically different that um, you know critics sort of really did sort of hound Jaguar but the XJS proved to be a very successful car but um, this was around about the period that Ford were taking over Jaguar and they sort of I'm not sure to be honest without doing some research I can't remember whether Jaguar or Ford you know put these sort of curves and the, and the quad headlamps back the other thing is that the back is very very similar as well You've got these sort of triangular type of um, tail lights. On the slightly earlier car, they weren't triangular. They did, they were just sort of straight down on the series one and two cars. But um, this one, let's just go, let's just go right back here. You can see we've got a sort of a, it's, it is a lot bigger, but they've tried to sort of, as much as possible, I'm nearly getting myself run over here. I'm not watching where I'm going. <laughs> um, I am working on the road. <laughs> yeah, that one, let's just zoom in a touch. You can see it's triangular. And they've tried to make this one triangular too. And I just find this just the most beautiful car. You know, it's um, that, I have to be honest, I'm, my heart is drawn to the earlier car. I've always adored these early cars. And um, nothing anybody can say can talk sense into me and get me away from these things. This realistically is a lot easier to live with. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's a different generation and um, the engineering have moved on and it's just a lot easier to live with. And um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. They're both beautiful and um, I'm really rather honored and sort of thrilled, quite blessed that I do have a beautiful example of each. 
So I'm just going to move off the road once again because I'm nearly getting myself run over. Let's just have a, so, so I don't get myself run over on the road. Let's have a look inside. And they are quite similar inside. You know, in the typical Jaguar sort of fashion, it's got, you know, just acres of walnut. Beautiful, beautiful walnut. Gorgeous, incredibly soft seats. Now, I have to be truthful with these seats. They're a different league to the ones in the, in the Series 3. The Series 3, they're comfortable, but these are just unbelievable. They're just sublime. Um, I, I've never sat in a car quite so comfortable. So um, if I could make these seats fit, fit that one, I would do. But I've, a friend of mine, Adam, uh, living with the classics in Sweden, um, he runs a wonderful uh, YouTube channel. He, tr you know, he, I say he didn't, he has, he hasn't tried. He has made um, later sort of XJ40 seats fit his Series 2. And it was, a, it was a terrible job. It really was a big, big, big job. Now let's look inside here. You know, look how similar they are. And this, it's just not quite, it's not got quite, to be fair, this one is nearly 40 years old and the foams have softened. That's supposed to be a lot plumper. And under the body restoration, I'm going to be having, I'm going to be having these skins, these seat skins off the frames and some of the stitching starting to fail. So I'll restitch this and I'll put new foam in it, it'll plump up. But, but once again, you know, just gorgeous walnut and eh, they're very, very similar. They are just so similar. Obviously, there's no airbags in this one. But, um, to be honest, that doesn't put me off. Obviously, the red one's a lot safer to drive. Uh, it's, you know, it's got airbags, but it doesn't stop me actually preferring the earlier car. Do you know, this is one of my favorite views of, you know, these sort of twin pipes that, 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 that swoop out. I just think that is just the most staggeringly beautiful view. But, um, I just, yeah, I've really been excited about doing these two videos and, um, you know, I really wanted to sort of compare the two cars, just sort of look at them side by side. And it's really quite striking how much lower the later car is. And I'll, I'll make another video in a minute and I'll explain why. Um, it's something to do with the engine and I'll show you on, on the red one why they were able to get it so low. It technically wasn't possible on the, um, on the earlier gold car there. 